So in order to better understand the dictionary comprehension, we are going to talk about a couple of examples in this video. So example number one, suppose that we want to generate a dictionary like this, which you can see the values is the key to the power of two. For example, one is one to the power of two. This four is two to the power of two. And this, for example, 16 is four to the power of two. And this 25 is five to the power of two. So that's it. Suppose that we want to generate a dictionary like this. So now in order to do so, we want to define a dictionary, let's say called D, and I simply type for I in range of one all the way up to six. And then we are going to have key value pairs, which the key, which the key is I, and the corresponding value is I to the power of two. So now if I print the D variable, if I run the code, you can see here's the exact same dictionary as we have expected. So now let's take another example. Suppose that I have a list called ages, which you can see some ages here, 18, 20, 26, and 128. And I want to define a dictionary comprehension based on these conditions. If the age is less than or equal to 100, I want to assign the young as the value. And otherwise, I want to assign old as the value. I mean something like this. You can see 18 is young, 20 is young, 26 is young but 128 is old. So I want to build a dictionary like this. In order to do so, we define a dictionary, let's say called D, and I simply tap for age in ages, for age in ages, and I want to define key value pairs. The key is the age, and the value, and the value is young, if the age is less than or equal to 100, and else it is old, so else it is old. So the age is the key and the value is this, which if the age is less than or equal to 100, it is going to return young and otherwise it is going to return old. So now if I print the D variable and if I run a code, you can see here is the exact same results as we have expected. Now suppose that we have a dictionary containing the book names and the corresponding prices of each book. And now suppose that we want to convert these prices into pounds. So we want to generate a dictionary like this, which contains the book names and their corresponding prices, for example, in pound. And also we can see that I have to find a variable called dollar to pound, which is equal to 0 0.82. It means that $1 is 0 0.82 pounds. And now I want to use dictionary comprehension in order to generate the new price dictionary. So I define a variable, let's say called new price, which is going to be a dictionary. And I want to use dictionary comprehension. So our dictionary is going to have a key and a corresponding value. So it has key and values which they pair together and we simply type for key and value in old price dot items. It means that we want the key and values in the old price dictionary. So we are simply saying for every key and value in the old price dictionary, we want to have those key and values as well. And this is the new price dictionary. So if I print the new price dictionary, you can see that it, ex it is exactly the same as dictionary. But as you can see, this is not the thing that we want. We want to multiply each value by 0 0.82 because you want to convert the dollar to pound. So that's very simple. So we want to multiply each value, each value in the old price dictionary by dollar to pound variable. So if I run a code, we can see now we have this dictionary, which is the prices of each book in pound. Now another example, suppose that we want to generate the dictionary and we want to convert the dollars to pounds for just those books which their price is less than or equal to $10. So we want the values in the old price dictionary which their value is less than or equal to 10. So you can see we want to define an if statement. So that's very simple. Here we can simply type if the value is less than or equal to 10. If the value is less than or equal to 10, build a key value pair like this, which the key is exactly the same key as the old price dictionary, but the value is going to be converted by multiplying that value to the dollar to pound variable, which is 0 0.82. So now if I run the code, we can see we just have these two books, which their initial price in dollar is less than or equal to 10. And also a very important note, 
Remember that you shouldn't put this if a statement in the value. So for example, you cannot even remove this and put it here. So you cannot simply type if v is less than or equal to 10 here. So if you run a code, you will get an error. And maybe you say, okay, I put else none. But if you do that thing, and if you run a code, you can see the corresponding value for the compound effect is none, which is not the thing that we want. We just want to filter the compound effect, which its initial value is above $10. So if you want to filter out some values, some key value pairs, you are going to define that if a statement here in this place, not in the value place. So here, because I want to filter those values, which their initial price is less than or equal to 10, I should put that in, in this place, not in the value place. So if I run a code, you can see here is what we have expected. Now another example, suppose that I have a data set like this and I want to calculate the mean of each column except the target column because the target column is the class label which we don't want to calculate the mean for this column. So we want to calculate the mean of all the columns except the target column. And as a matter of fact, we want to get something like this which you can see the key values is the name of columns and the corresponding value is the mean of each column which you can see here. So we want to build a dictionary like this. So that's very simple. I define a dictionary, let's say called D, and I simply type for every column, for every column in df.columns, in df.columns, if the column, if the column is not equal to target, is not equal to target, it means that if the column is not the target column, then we want to define a key value per and that key value per is this we want to have the column as the key and the value is going to be np.mean i mean the mean value the average of that column so i simply type df and that column so i'm calculating the mean of that special column of our data frame so now if i print the d variable which is our dictionary if i run a code you can see here is the result which is exactly the same as we have expected. Now I really suggest you to watch this video which is on the screen now.